So Jordan, welcome to Let's Do Humans podcast. Thank you, partner. Thank you. How's it Absolute going? pleasure. It's going good. It's yeah. going good. I do this thing where, depending on the day it is, I yeah. use the first letter. I say that's how I'm feeling. Oh, for real? So I'm feeling stupendous. It's a Sunday. For the Sunday. So what would you say for a Monday then? Marvellous. Marvellous. Tuesday? Shit. Tremendous. He <laughs> <laughs> called me off guard there. Catch you off guard. Yeah. Um, I mean, before we started recording, yeah. you just um, you just made a reference to BJJ. Yes. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And that's one of the, well, it's not the only reason why I got you on the podcast, but when I was going through your socials, I realised that you've been trading martial arts for a bit. Tell me a bit yeah. about that. Yeah. Awesome. I'll jump straight into it. So, yeah. before most people know me as a European chopper jumper. Um, okay. So that's what I used to do. I used to jump into sand for a living. No way. Um, so, yeah. Hop, step, jump on yeah. my poor 60 year old knees <laughs> and then um, yeah. as time progressed I started mm. my own business study mm. fast and we're going to get into that definitely yes, yeah. I appreciate that man and then with time what mm. I realised was whilst I was working yeah. I'd be like oh, I've got to go training yeah. and I started seeing training as a hindrance yeah. as opposed to enjoying it mm-hmm. and there was a few things you know during that transition was whilst I was doing martial arts in the background yeah. um, karate has always been in my childhood okay so um, karate came before the Brazilian yeah, jiu-jitsu. Yeah, karate, you know, yeah. stand-up game. Mm. And what I realised was the return on investment mm. with my business mm. meant, of course, I could live the lifestyle I wanted. Yeah. With martial arts, it meant I could protect myself in the real world. Yeah. And when I got to European level of triple jump, mm. I know it sounds really bad, but it wasn't what I expected. Okay. In the sense that... Was it not what, glori- as glorified as um, other <sighs> sports? So what was it about it that you weren't expecting? Well, you know... You, you, there's no money in athletics yeah. you know they say that you have to be the top yeah. 5% to get money in yeah. athletics and I knew that mm. and um, I never started it for that reason oh, okay but what I realised was how valuable my time was amazing definitely and as I saw the more time I dedicated to the business mm. the more financial freedom I yeah. had the more time I dedicated to my martial arts mm. I mean we'll so talk the return on investment arts. was definitely yeah it was yeah. key and yeah. triple jump no longer held a high mm. priority in my life for yeah. that. and I think that's really quite tricky for some mm. people because they fall in love with the identity yeah. of I'm yeah. a triple jumper or yeah. I'm a martial artist yeah. and as soon as you get an injury mm. or you lose passion for it mm-hmm. that transition can be tricky I, completely um, so I, was, yeah. I was blessed enough where I had multiple identities yeah oh, see, see. it's not like I have schizophrenia but I don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's going to put that one out there slightly, though, do yeah. you know what I mean we've all got like various forms of identities of and personalities based on what our setting is and what is it that we're doing, yeah. do you know what I mean? But one of the reasons why I do um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is, um, it, it, to me personally, it humbles me. Mm. It, it's a sport that keeps me grounded and well humbled because I was speaking about this a while back on my Snapchat, actually. I went into like a storytelling mode and I don't hardly go into storytelling modes on any of my socials. Yeah. So this was like one of my one-offs. I came back from a training session where I got completely battered. It was just one of those bad days. You know, you have them. It's yeah. like, it's people that you... I mean, I don't, you know. Right. Uh, you're bad, man. You got this in there. <laughs> I'm not telling you the <laughs> Yeah, one tapping out. But it was just one of those weird days for me where it was people that I knew I could have and I've been having them for ages. I've been able to um, beat them in sparring like with ease. But I was just having one of those terrible days and I realised that I was still okay with it. Mm. And afterwards, we were still hugging it out. We were still buddies. We were mm. still chilling, bantering, talking, joking and absolutely was fine with it. Yeah. So on my journey back, I thought, wait, there's something that Jiu-Jitsu gives me that I've never really explored. And that's that sense of humility because you go into an environment where you're not always the winner. You're not always the yeah. biggest and baddest in the room. Do you know what I mean? But you're still having to, you're still having to then humble yourself afterwards to mm. be able to relate to those individuals and have a relationship outside of the, the, the martial arts setting. Oh, you're telling you know me. I mean? So humility is like a big key for me. It keeps you grounded. It also keeps you strong and you're able to mm. then defend yourself in the real world, as yeah. you say. So that's one of the things I take from it. And that's why I absolutely love martial arts. Yeah. And, you know, to kind of follow on what you were mm-hmm. saying about being humble is mm-hmm. my first ever session, um, I trained with this really hardcore yeah. group down in Exeter. Oh, a bunch okay. of white guys, yeah. bald, oh, tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I didn't fit in. Yeah. And they didn't take it easy on me. Yeah. And I remember, like, I tapped out mm. for the first time. As soon as he touched you, you tapped out. What did you have? <laughs> <laughs> that, that discomfort. It's like, us, <laughs> up, I'm out. And yeah. um, when he touched me and mm. I tapped out, you know, you're admitting that if this was a real fight, you would have killed me. Mm. You know, that really crossed my mind yeah. is when you tap out on someone, you yeah. say to them that if this was real life, you would have mm. killed me. 
Yeah. But what's interesting is they release, mm. you bump hands, and mm. you go again. Yeah. And that concept, you have to leave your ego at the door. 100%. Or else you 100%, are going to get injured. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I think a lot of the injuries come from, um, I'm a white belt still myself, mm-hmm. but, you know, from naive, aggressive, strong white belts mm. is because um, we talk about identity. Yeah. You know, we talk about manhood. Yeah. And um, you have this complex. Mm. You know, what keeps us alive. Ego, no, 100%. Ego is good. 100%. Um, yeah. But BJJ and the final point on this for me is I realised how ineffective I was before I did martial arts. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. and maybe a lot of the viewers watching mm-hmm. and listening who don't do martial arts um, I would argue are so much less effective than mm. what they think they are. Mm. Until you are in a simulation because yeah. that's what it is. It's a it's simulation. A simulation yeah. You realise, wow, I'm not as effective as I thought. Most I was. definitely, and it's actually important. Um, it's, it's actually important what you're touching on right now because I was recently watching a talk um, um, by Akala, and he was talking about mm. how schools should implement martial arts into into his curriculum. Interesting. Like it's a way of teaching kids discipline and yeah. teaching them that form of humility, as we just discussed as well. So it's it's super vital because it's helping us as adults. So yeah, what would the impact be if we were taught this from a younger age and we're then able to then have that collaboration with our colleagues, our peers, and in like society in general? So it's just a wonderful thing, but I know we kind of digressed and we haven't actually introduced you as an individual. Like, who are you? You're just sitting over the sofa. <laughs> but funny enough, well, most, most of my viewers will know that I usually record in my own place, but yeah. Jordan was wonderful enough to host me his place. So he made me trek all the way from Essex to, um, yeah, the other yeah, side of the river. Yeah. yeah, it was a bit of a trek, but I enjoyed the journey. It was a lovely day out as well. So um, who's Jordan Harry? Can you tell us a bit yeah, about who you are as an individual so the viewers under, um, get a better glimpse of Yeah, I'd be more than happy. Um, so my name is Jordan Harry, and I teach people how to read fast. I remember more. Six, 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 um, six, six, put it six. simply, I'm a speed reading and memory coach. Mm. And I run my own business called Study Fast. Mm-hmm. We've taught over, I think, about 15,000 people now, mm. online and offline, mm-hmm. uh, from 147 different countries, oh, wow. which is incredible. I think yeah. someone told me there's about 190 countries. Yeah. So, you know, to think that oh, we've wow. touched someone in every country yeah. in the world yeah. blows my mind. That's amazing. Um, and it all started because I had a speech impediment. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't think so because I speak so posh now. Yeah. <laughs> but being yeah. a mama's boy, she trained the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. And because I had the speech impediment, mm-hmm. that affected my ability to stand up on stage. Yeah. So, you know, teaching people was yeah. out of the question. My reading speed suffered. Mm-hmm. Because I can pronounce the words. So I'm learning Spanish at the moment. And anyone who's learning a new language realizes if you can't pronounce the word correctly, you don't know what it means. Yeah. yeah. And you have to slow down. Yeah. And so my reading speed suffered. Um, so whilst I was at uni, um, actually before that, if you don't mind me sharing. No, no, go differently. Yeah, um, sure. I moved from Essex. I'm an Essex boy by heart. Oh, you're Essex boy? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm in East London. I'm, I moved to Essex. So, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. The posh parts of Chigwell. Oh, okay. There are any posh yeah, yeah. parts in Essex. <laughs> and we moved to Norfolk. Mm. Old people and dogs and me. Mm. And so I went from being part of my jersey, you know, being one of the lightest kids in yeah. my class, to being the darkest kid in the county no way. in Norfolk. Yeah, for yeah. real. And, you know, I wasn't a naughty kid. Mm. I was a cheeky kid. And I think one day we kicked a ball up against the window. Mm. Didn't smash. I was with a group of guys. Mm. Sat in class. Mm. Teacher calls me out. Mm. And I've got a chip on my shoulder. I think this teacher's out to get me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Old white dude. Um, it puts it into context. Mm-hmm. And he said, before he could even speak, I kind of blew off on him. Mm. I was like, why always me? Like yeah. Mario Balotelli. Mario Balotelli was where is he actually? Yeah. Where is Mario Balotelli right now? I don't know. I don't know where he's stuck at the moment. He was in Italy for a while, but I Go don't know where him. he's going now. Yeah, he's just we digress. <laughs> yeah. He's still alive. He's still he's with still us. About, yeah. um, and I said, why always me? Mm. He taught me a very valuable lesson. He said, Jordan, you stand out. Mm. I knew what he meant by that. He didn't have to say why. Yeah. He said, you have to remember you need to stand out for the right reasons. Mm. And that really hit home for me because here I am, this image of this racist old teacher mm. who's got it out for me, along with the rest of the school. Yeah. And I was, I was trying to be like a cool young black guy, mm-hmm. you know, coming from Essex. Yeah. So speaking white, yeah. quote unquote, wasn't cool. Mm. You know, putting yourself in education mm. and giving your all wasn't a cool thing to do. Yeah. But I thought to myself, hmm, okay, I'm a cool kid. Mm. What if I show people dressing well, speaking well, and learning? Mm was a cool thing. So changing the narrative on changing what the yeah, pretty yeah. sick, yeah. Um, and that kind of then begun where I am today, you know, mm. kind of cascade of events, mm. going to uni, um, understanding how people work, yeah. um, 
you know, I'm not, I didn't have a broken brain or anything, yeah. you know, and I wasn't in the gifted and talented classes, mm-hmm. but I enjoyed education. But in terms of the speech impediment, how did you yeah. deal with that initially at a ah, young age? Yeah. Mum dragged me to speech therapy. Yeah, oh, there's okay. no pretty story behind that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Mum forced me out. Oh, yeah. massive, because once I could articulate myself, mm-hmm. then I was able to speak more confidently in public. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't have the fear of reading, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and then once I thought, okay, let me change the narrative. Mm-hmm. No one's going to pick on me, you know, thankfully, because yeah. of my size, because of yeah. well, my background. No one bullied me. Mm-hmm. So if I was putting my hand up first, yeah. no one was like, <clears throat> what, yeah, loser? Put your hand down, yeah. Everyone yeah. was like, yo, mm-hmm. Jordan's doing it. We should. We should, 100%. And I'm trying to still do that, you know, with my business. Yeah, representation is key because, yeah. I mean, it's, I explained this in one of my previous podcasts as well because that's one of the reasons why I do what I do because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to put, like, creative and informative educational content out there. But yeah. being me and looking like who I am, I'm able to then appeal to maybe, like, the younger version of myself who didn't have access to this type of information. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but going back to the, the reading side of things, so I have, I have a weird relationship with reading, like... I didn't really start reading properly to a, re- a late age. Okay. Like, I was probably like in my late teens, hitting twenties. So after reading of Mice and Men in school, which yeah. you were forced into what reading. Book. What a book! What well. a book! Yeah, <laughs> uh, is it Larry and Henry and all, all the rest of the crew? But um, yeah, you're forced into reading that. And in school, you're forced into like standing up and reading, and not being confident to read. You're always kind of shying away mm. from your name being called out. But uh, my first experience of ever completing a book outside of secondary school, I was probably like 19, 20, wow. to be honest with you. Yeah, not many people know this story. I, I reckon you're not alone. <laughs> I reckon Definitely, there's yeah. not many people that've completed a book who have from start yeah, to finish. completed yeah. a book. Hundred percent. And it's funny because the individual who actually got me into reading, she doesn't know that she got me into reading um, inadvertently. So it, I used I, as a young kid, um, teenager, I used to work in Marks and Spencers. It was probably like, one of my first ever jobs. Awesome. And one of my colleagues actually, um, she her name is Francesca. She's going to be thinking, oh wow, it all makes sense now. So she used to read these books by um, an author called Eric Joram Dickey. So he's a um, he's an erotic writer. He's a um, he's a black erotic book writer. So I've never been interested in books because I never. There was Don't tell me I'm, you started with this book. I, I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> As your first book. It's hey, crazy. It's I'm, crazy. Not saying I'm not judging you, but yeah, <laughs> because there was never anything that at a young age yeah. and someone who's not really interested in reading anyway, and I used to find trouble reading anyway, because when I opened mm. books, everything was blurry. So it could have been slightly dyslexia, whatever it was, yeah. everything was slightly blurry. And there was nothing that was gripping me to want to finish the story in the first place. Of course. Or no one was forcing me. I wasn't accountable to anyone to finish this book. But um, she was telling me about these books, and I went out there and sourced one myself. I thought, okay, I'm a young boy. This yeah. sounds highly, a bit interesting. And I started reading it, and they, the, story, the story dragged me. You can imagine why it dragged me, being mm-hmm. a young boy reading that type of content. Hey, yeah. That and would still drag me right now. 100% <laughs> that, that would blow my mind. About you, 100%. So the, I was like, wait, hold on. If I'm able to complete a book because I found it interesting, mm-hmm. why don't I find content which I like? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It would enable me to then read more and it would enable to probably help me with my speech because I was an East London boy at that time. I had really like broken English, spoken highly in slang and I struggled with certain words, understanding them and pronouncing them. Mm. So I then, I then started sourcing out things that I was interested in, i.e. business books, um, self-help books, um, yeah. bi- books in relation to people that I was interested in. And then I realised that, okay, I'm now able to finish books because I'm interested in the content in the book and the individuals who are in the book. And that's how I got into reading myself. So it's, it's super interesting as to like how people like find ways of um, engaging with content and yeah. books in particular so yeah that's pretty sick I think that's yeah. the key point as well you know you talk about motivation mm. and I, I want to make this disclaimer in the sense it's ironic I'm a speed reading coach mm. but I say some people just don't enjoy reading mm. so why would I um, force um, a professional a student a teacher mm. to read mm. when they don't enjoy it mm. Audiobooks is another great way to consume information. And you can put it on times Mm 1.5, you know, get your brain used to taking in Mm -hmm. information faster. Um, But reading, some people just flat out don't enjoy it. So the the thing is, I mean, me personally, one of the reasons why, the the part of my reading that I don't really enjoy is that I find it time consuming. And this comes back to why I find your business quite interesting. I want you to elaborate more on it. So when I pick up a book, I Mm -hmm. struggle to get through it fast enough yeah. I feel like it becomes time consuming. So I might schedule maybe half an hour reading time a, a week or a day or whatever. But in that time, I'm not able to take in much of that book. But you're, you're, I, think, I think one of the slogans in, on your um, socials is that a book a day. So how does one take in a book a day? Yes. 
Yeah. So, you know, when we look at people's lifestyles, mm -hmm. not everyone's lifestyle permits to reading a book a day. Mm -hmm. You know, so in my TED Talk, um, I talk about getting... Which is amazing, by the way. So you, make sure you, people man. check out your TED Talk. There's, I mean, it's more than a million views and that's how I came across your content. I was wow, like, that's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's pretty sick. That blows my mind because there was only, what, 10 people in that room? Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a, there's a dumb camera angle. I yeah, don't know why they yeah. did it, but they put a camera um, on the board that had my slides on. Oh, so okay. it was shooting behind my back no way. I don't know why they want to show the audience because there was 10 people in the audience. I'm always under the assumption that there's a whole bunch of people there like you're speaking to half the world. I know. Yeah. And the funny thing was three of them were the event organizers. One was my <laughs> ex at the time. One was yeah. my videographer. So there was five people in that room. No way. But I said to myself, let me imagine there's 5,000. Yeah. These, yeah. The, you know, these five people don't deserve any less value. Mm. And to come back to, you know, how do you read a book a day? Mm. Is it that um, Pareto's Law? Mm. Pareto's law is the 80-20 principle. Yeah. Economists will be familiar with this. It's the idea that 80% of the world's wealth yeah. is owned by 20% of the people. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to get your head around that. Yeah. And this law is seen through everything. Mm. With relationships, you know, 20% of your actions mm -hmm. contribute to 80% of the results. Um, not to cut you off, but it's interesting because yeah, I recorded right. a podcast, yes, well, not yet, was it yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, it was yesterday, and um, the lady who I was speaking to, we were talking about relationships in, in okay. relations to what I'm about to say, and um, they, there was a recent survey done by, I think, Tinder and a few other apps that, hmm. that said that 80% of women are after 20% of men. I can one second, let me get my head around that. So 80% of women... The majority of women are after the small, high-quality guys. Yeah. And I'm guessing guys are very round. Guys, we, we have just no go standards. for anything in any way. <laughs> we have no standards. <laughs> no I standards indeed, yeah. So it's interesting that yeah. it works in relation to so many different things. Mm. So, yeah. Now I can see that. Mm. I can see how... Because guys, we're like, we're not even looking what we're swiping. For those that do swipe, <laughs> whilst with girls, it's more like intently looked at your... I understand. Yeah. There's a quite, you know, kind of, you know, I'm no relationship coach, mm. but I've read mm. about stuff like this, and it goes back to our primal instincts. Yeah. You know, hunters gatherers mm. you know the, the stronger the faster alpha males 100 percent yeah. you know and we won't digress now mm. um but that's fascinating and you can see this 80 20 principle throughout life yeah so how do you read a book a day mm. the idea is with speed reading mm. you can get through 20 percent of the book mm. and get 80 percent of the value oh, okay because let's think about it as an author mm. and this is you know for non-fiction and i really should have specified that mm. during my ted talk you know as well as it has done well, so this, this only applies to non-fiction reading? Yeah, because oh, okay. you wouldn't want to speed read a fiction book. Oh, okay. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Yeah, because yeah. say we put on a, a film, mm -hmm. you know, or when, whenever you watch a film, you set two hours aside to watch that film. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You never put the film on two times. Mm. You know, you sit down, you've blocked that time period, mm -hmm. just like we have. Mm. And hopefully just like the viewers have. Yeah. So it's the same with speed reading is when you sit down to read a novel, mm -hmm. you want to take your time. However, there will be periods where you need to get through something fast. Yeah. You know, there's so many new skills people want to learn and it's just not enough time. Mm -hmm. So how can speed reading work for you? And it's the idea of an author can't put um, a book out and it only has 10 pages. Because mm -hmm. let's be honest, a book mm -hmm. probably only has 10 pages of value. Yeah. yeah. But they can't sell yeah. a book, yeah. you know, for 10 pages, <laughs> unless you're like Warren Buffett or something yeah. like that. So the idea is they have to fill it up with anecdotal stories. They have to fill it up with mm. waffle. Mm. So how do you pull out the key bits of information? And we won't get into it now, but reading... No, I mean, you can, you can go through it briefly. I love yeah, that. So you at know, least people get an idea ah, of how awesome. to process it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be brilliant. So, yeah, you know, because reading is a skill. There's mm. different levels of reading, mm. ranging from analytical mm. reading, where you're reading in between the lines, yeah. to elementary reading, where you are literally just taking in the meaning of the words. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what we all kind of start off. Yeah. Um, but what you need to do to read faster is you need to break your habits. Okay. So because what, many of us habits? haven't had a class called reading since the age of 10. Yeah. And n I never have had a class called memory. Mm. Yeah, I believe education is a memory game. Mm. You know, you sit and test, you've got to regurgitate yeah. how much you remember. Um, of course, we can argue when you say an English one. So the habits that we look at is number one, sub-vocalization, which is that little voice in your head that you use. Yeah. So when you read, yeah, it. when I'm reading, I'm always I'm actually reading it in my head as yeah. well. Yeah. So I'm reading out loud. I can hear myself reading. Yeah. And most people either are aware to it and they think that's not a problem, mm. or number two, people aren't aware. Yeah. 
So continue talking. Yeah, of course. Yeah, super, super, super. So whilst we're for this intermission, I'll take over the show for now. <laughs> so sub-vocalization is that voice inside your head. So if we think about it, the average talking speed is 150 to 250 words per minute. So then when we look at the average reading speed, yeah. it's no surprise that the average reading speed is 250 words per minute. So we're slowing ourselves down by sub-vocalizing. Yeah. We can only read as fast as we can talk. Oh, if we're using that voice in our head, yeah. unless you're Tony Robbins, if you don't know who he is, check him out after this. Yeah. He's a motivational speaker. Mm-hmm. He speaks at 500 words per minute. Yeah, you know? Ben Shapiro is pretty similar as well. He's a political analyst. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So we don't want to get rid of that voice completely because it does help us make sense of information. Mm. But you don't need to sound out the word because. You know what the word means. Mm. You don't need to sound it out. You should start to see the words and start of hearing them. So, so what you're consciously just to, just to clarify, yeah. So you're consciously ignoring certain words in order to Ooh. speed up the process. Good or point. How does? It? Yeah. So you're not ignoring the word because mm-hmm. you're creating. How can I say? You're seeing the words instead of hearing it. Oh, okay. It's a few things that you do because all you gotta do is distract the brain. Mm. Low level distraction. Number one yeah. is you can introduce a low level distraction like pressing the tip of your tongue to the top of your mouth whilst okay. you read. I see. Yeah, and it sounds so. You're not, you're not forcing banal. yourself to say the words now. I see. Because what our brains struggle to do is do two things effectively at once. Mm-hmm. You know, ask any wives; they'll be able to agree. <laughs> <laughs> right? Especially men, yeah. Yeah. But in fact, there's studies though that yeah. do prove that women there's no such thing as multitasking. Yeah. But task switching, but women are better. Oh, okay. Yeah. At doing two things at once, mm. but you can't do both at 100. Yeah. Definitely. One has to. Yeah. Someone's definitely going to take a hit. Yeah. So what we're doing by pressing the tongue to the top of our mouth, mm-hmm. such a low level action. You don't, you don't have to think about doing that. Mm. You can just hold it there. Is that doing the whole process whilst you're reading? Yeah. Yes, whilst you're reading. Mm. Or you can simply tap on your leg whilst you're reading, which is a great way to keep pace as well whilst you're reading. Ah. So it's these low level distractions. Another mm. one is listening to music without lyrics. Okay. If we get even more Just detail. Like instrumentals and stuff. Yeah. Instrumentals, mm-hmm. and we've all probably heard. specific type of instrumentals, because it could be like hardcore rap or whatever. Yeah, of course. That could be slightly distracting, or is it, yeah. or is it specific? Yeah. It's classical music. Mm-hmm. Um, because, once again, from my own feedback and studies, is if you know the song and it has lyrics, you want to sing along. Yeah, definitely. Whilst if it's classical music mm. or orchestra, mm. you can't sing along. Mm. And what's great is your brain has to focus more on what you're reading so it doesn't get distracted mm. by the noise. Um, I, I don't do meditation. Um, I feel like everyone yeah, does it differently. Neither do I. I, don't I feel like, you know, going training, that's mm. my church, that's yeah, my meditation. Yeah. And with music, it gets your body into the same state as meditation. Classical music. It's a certain wavelength that gets your body to an alpha state. Mm. That's why they say that it's good to play classical music to... Um, children whilst they're still in the wheel mm. so if mothers are carrying children it, it helps with their um, I don't know apparently it helps with the brain and I've got no babies that I know of yeah I mean, imagine- neither do I I've got no kids either yeah but it's just something I've heard like, yeah. it helps yeah. so it could be something to do with the frequency that's then. Yeah. yeah that would make sense for the baby to relax yeah yeah put it at ease yeah. Um, so that's number one mm-hmm. is that voice in your head how do you get rid of it without you know me mm. actually speaking with that person and working with them mm-hmm. individually Quick little tip people can do right away is a low level distraction. Yeah. Music, tip of the tongue to your mouth or tapping on your leg whilst you read. Yeah. The voice won't go completely mm. because, like I say, we need that sometimes to make sense. But we want to eliminate it and eliminate it, reduce it mm-hmm. uh, because it's not useful for every single word. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And um, you, you, you talk about uh, memory as well. So yeah. a lot of people always complain about their memories. Of course. So for me, for instance, I, f- I think I might have selective memory, but. Uh, going through some of your content we all, like, do. That, yeah. we all have selective memory yeah I, I mean I have selective memory and I have I, I don't want to say problems because I know you're, you're, you're probably going to say there is no such thing as having problems with your memory which I would want you to say but I do <laughs> think I have problems remembering certain things yeah yeah, especially my long term. So uh, I might be consuming some content and then by the end of it, 90% of it is gone. Mm. And I only remember the 10% which I stopped to at the time. Yeah. So how do we deal with some of those things? Because I know that that's what okay. you do with in, in your business as well. Yeah, so a couple of things there, a couple of things there. So number one mm. is there's no such thing as a bad memory unless you've been diagnosed yeah. with some sort of brain damage. Mm. You know, all of us, touch wood, you know, healthy. Mm. Um, and so there's no such thing as a bad memory, just an untrained memory. I see. 
It's yeah. easy when you know how. Yeah. You know, it's like, you can't say you're a bad martial artist, but you've never trained. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you can say you're a bad martial know. artist. Yeah. You can say you're bad if you train. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with the memory, that's number one. It's mindset. You know, we won't get too kind of hippie and guru, yeah. but, you know, self-talk's powerful. We all know that. We know how powerful the brain is. Mm -hmm. So number one is you need to start telling yourself you have a good memory. Mm. But that's great, but you need to start seeing it. So step number two is how do you hold on mm. to any information? Because you never forget anything you remember. I'll say that again. Yeah. You never, <laughs> you never forget. forget anything you remember. Okay. You just never remembered it in the first so place. So anything you set your mind to and you stick to it as if Gone. you want to remember it for the long term, you will do. So is it, is it the focus? Well, how, how do you break that? Yeah, to so put it simply, anything that you can recall 20 seconds after mm -hmm. you've, been, you've received the information mm -hmm. or the stimuli, if you can recall it after 20 seconds, that's in your long-term memory. Oh, okay. Which blows my mind, right? Because, uh, you know, before this, we were talking about your time in Brazil, talking about martial yeah, arts, talking yeah. about ages, yeah. you know. So I can remember your age, 32. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, if you ask me... Like, Shit! <laughs> I got you there. Motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, baby. I love that. Yeah. So you see, something like that, for example, mm. I mm. thought I remembered it. Yeah. Right? You're close enough though. And yeah. then afterwards, I, I recall it after 20 seconds. Did I forget it? No. Mm. What happened is I didn't retrieve it. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is, have you had a car crash? Yeah. Before? Yeah. Okay, if you don't mind me asking, do you remember when the car crash was? Yeah. Okay, who you were with? By myself, yeah. By yourself. Mm. Do you remember the date? No, not the exact date, but I remember where I was going. I remember the whole thing. I remember most of the people around. Yeah, what you were wearing. Involved, what I was wearing as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is crazy, but if I was to ask you what you had for lunch four days ago. I don't remember what I had for lunch yesterday. <laughs> four days ago. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I love that. And that, you know, I think that's for all of us, myself yeah. included. I'm a memory trainer yeah. and we've just seen that like, I forgot your age. Mm. You know, I'm not immune to this. No mm. one is. And if we don't use the strategies, we forget. So, so that memory, is that, yeah. is that tied down to there being a, an incident that was unforgettable that was associated to it? Or why do I remember yeah, that? Yeah, so that's yeah. the key. That's the question. Why do you remember certain things and you forget others? Because, yeah. like I said, you don't forget anything after 20 seconds. Mm. If you can recall it after 20 seconds. So if you told me age 33, I can recall mm. that now. Yeah. All right. There's another thing that's gone on there mm. that's called um, brute learning where I thought something was true. Mm. And it's like, for example, do you know what the capital of Australia is? Is it... Um, it's not Sydney, what, Sydney. It's, now, this is the thing. I'm yeah, going to yeah. expose you. It's not Sydney. Yeah. What is it Melbourne? I feel like I'm crossing No, it's not Melbourne. What is it? It's, oh, shit. It's come... Adelaide. It's come... I feel like I need a visa. I need someone to help me now. <laughs> Are we able to get the phone? Yeah, yeah you find some? I think it's yeah. Cam Cam Cambia. Is it Cambia? I apologise if I'm pronouncing it wrong. It starts with a C. I feel like it's Cambia, but type in the capital of Australia. You just completely. And I promise you, everyone who's watching, <laughs> yeah. you all forget Sydney, Melbourne. I thought it was Sydney. Yeah, definitely. Now you won't forget this. Uh, and this is called the learning effect because what happens is when we hold something to be true for so long, yeah, that we generally believe that like, this is the gospel, and then when we find out we've been disproven. Yeah. It blows our minds. Okay. I don't know, have you got it up yet? My phone is acting up, but it's, it's, cool. it's coming through. Cool. In a sec. And you won't forget now the capital of Australia. Like I say, the pronunciation is a bit tricky. Yeah. So, capital. But whilst yeah. you're searching for that, so we've got different types of long term memory. So, the reason why you remember a car accident? No way. What is it? I've never even heard of the Cam place. Canberra? Yeah. Canberra, there so you go. C A N. B E double -R, R A. Yeah, never heard of the place. Never heard of the place. And I'm going to blow your mind even more. Australia doesn't exist. Now, this is only a theory. I've, I've, heard, I've theory. heard that theory before. I'm going to go and look. <laughs> Google that real quick and see what comes up. Is it South Korea or something? Or, or is it? It's somewhere weird. It's a case of. There's a couple. Finland doesn't exist. Australia doesn't exist, apparently. And I know you're going to be like, but Jordan, there's an Australian government. Right? <laughs> so what should <laughs> I tell Australia. Australia doesn't exist? Yeah, Australia doesn't exist. I don't know enough about it. I read it the other day. I don't say believe, I think you read. Yeah. But there's a lot of... Um, with this Australia whole... doesn't exist. Another bizarre geographical conspiracy. Yeah. Some people think Australia doesn't exist. So this whole Area 51, you know, everyone's now getting up on their high horse, trying oh, yeah. to yeah. disprove yeah, things. Area 51, yeah. So Australia and some other countries now... <laughs> 
You don't exist, do you? I found out they don't exist. Yeah. But yeah, Canberra is the capital of Australia. That is crazy. Exactly. So it took me 33 years of my life to figure out that Sydney's <laughs> not the capital. And I've got a couple of Australian niece as well. I've made yeah. a few travelling, so that's completely blown my of mind course. right now. Yeah. And I promise you, now you tell other people, you won't forget that. Because mm. you, this experience that you've been disproven, mm. so powerful. So you, you won't forget... Wait, go on. What's, the, what's, the, what's the name for that again? Because so, it's quite interesting. So it's the, called the learning effect. Learning effect. The learning effect. It's, it's interesting because now, I mean, knowing the type of person I am right now, I'm going to take that bit of information and yeah. like tie it in with a whole bunch of political theories There's and conspiracies so many things. and politics and so forth. So, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. The learning mm. effect is powerful. Mm. It's where we hold something to be true. Yeah. Or it's, I'm sorry, on the general consensus, we believe it mm. to be true. Mm. And then when we find out we've been disproven, it hits hard. It hits yeah. home. Yeah. And so, you know, we come back to the car crash. Why do you remember that? But you don't remember what you had for lunch yesterday. Mm. There's emotion tied. Mm -hmm. There's different types of long-term memory. Mm. The three most common, semantic, mm -hmm. which is cement. It's yeah. things that don't change. Like the capital of Paris <laughs> won't change. Mm. Capital of Paris, capital, capital of France. France. <laughs> my gosh, my brain's all over the place today now. <laughs> capital of France is Paris. You know, we don't have to review that mm. every week. And that answers your final question was, how can I improve my long-term memory? Yeah. You need to review it often over a period of time. Okay. I'll get into that in a moment. Mm -hmm. So semantic memories are cement. Mm -hmm. They're not going to change. Yeah. We don't have to revisit the capital of France. Yeah. We just know it. Mm -hmm. Unless you've been disproven by a guy on a couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, everything out the window. I was going to say. Yeah. The other one is procedural memory. Mm -hmm. So procedural memory, we've all heard about the saying, it's like riding a bike. Yeah. Never forget. Yeah. Procedural memory is like a procedure. It's like juggling, you put your foot down on the pedal, you mm. press the pressure down, you wait for the other pedal to come up, you push down. Yeah. So you don't have to remember like how to repetitive process. Yeah, yeah mm. just like martial arts. Mm. You know, we can't actively recall how to do a certain position or mm. how to do a certain submission on someone. Mm. But what happens is we know there's a step by step yeah. entry. Yeah. We're position. constantly drilling as well. So when you're drilling yeah. in martial arts, it's like that repetitive side, so it sticks exactly. to it. And then the final one is episodic, mm. which is the car crash. That's the episode. Mm. And that's where you've got emotions attached to it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to go a little bit deeper on that one, yeah. there's these things called false memories. Yeah, I've heard of So those. false memories. I've probably created a few in my head. I yeah. just did, I just yeah. did with your age, yeah. believe it or not, yeah. right? So our memories are never static. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew that, that our memories yeah. are never static. Mm -hmm. That if we don't review them mm -hmm. over a period of time, we'll forget. So yeah. with your age, you told me you were 33. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember you, because I guess you were 30. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was spot on being in that range. And obviously I forgot it. So my brain populated something close to it. Oh, okay. I so see. I generally thought that was the truth. And this mm -hmm. is why in courts, they need to get people in as quick as possible. Yeah. Because yeah. when you put someone on the stand and they're giving their testimony, they're not lying. Mm -hmm. Even though they've two eyewitnesses to the mm, car crash. Yeah. Their stories are different. Why? Because what our brains, our brains are incredible. Mm. They don't want us to forget. So they fill in the gaps yeah. with false memories. Yeah. So I thought you were 32. Yeah. And what that that's, time period so was only a couple minutes. Yeah. It, make, it makes a lot of sense now. Yeah. But, um, th so there's something I want to obviously discuss further. Yeah, of course. Is, um, the, the business now. Yeah. So you're, you're a super young entrepreneur. You're doing great Thank for yourself. So Thank you. I, wanna, I want you to talk more about um, Study Fast UK. How did it come about? How did you birth the idea? And when was sure. it set up? And what's the process been since? Yeah. Nice. So I'm only 22 years of age. Yeah. I know people won't know by the beard. Yeah. And, the <laughs> yes. and the camera, of course, is throwing yeah. people off because his looks bigger. <laughs> it's a thing, but yeah, it's just, it's I, have some, I have yeah. something here. I do have something here, I promise. He's getting there. <laughs> Thank you. I think we will start somewhere. Um, 22 years of age, full grown beard, full grown moustache. Yeah. Um, <laughs> beard game is hella strong. Yeah, you can say that, I can't say that. Um, and I've been running my business legally for two years. Amazing. But been doing it for four years whilst at uni. And it started off just giving workshops. Mm -hmm. Then I realized I can't be in two places at once. Mm -hmm. Powerful thing with the internet. Mm -hmm. Why not record myself? Mm -hmm. Why not create animations? Mm -hmm. Put it onto a platform with a systematic structure mm -hmm. for people to go through. And more importantly, as you all know, mm -hmm. whenever you're selling a product, people want to see a transformation. When people are listening yeah. to your podcast, by the end of the podcast, they want to have learned something. Mm -hmm. 
I always say this with martial arts. I'm biased. I'll keep bringing it back. Yeah. The Jordan who entered the gym mm-hmm. would have got beaten by the Jordan two hours ago. Oh, yeah. 100%. I always say, you know, within that two hour session, I would have beaten yeah. the Jordan two hours ago. And that's what people want. They want a transformation. Mm-hmm. And how can I do that? Well, I was like, okay, how can we increase people's reading speed? But not mm-hmm. just that, improve and maintain their memory. Mm-hmm. And that's when I went into the memory. And now I teach memory on how to learn the martial arts faster, which mm. I'll show you some tips after this, yes, yeah. or even on the podcast. Yeah. How to learn a language faster, mm. uh, remember names, long digits, mm. give a talk without a script. So my angle, because there's a lot of people teaching speed reading and memory training mm-hmm. in America more so. Yeah. So what makes me different? Mm. And we were talking about this earlier. Yeah, about what makes people stand out. Yeah. yeah you know, the fact people. that I am only 22 mm. and I'm teaching Six-year-old professors, which is sick, by the way, because I've watched Thank some of your you. I've watched some of your speeches online, and you're delivering talks in like Hong Kong yeah. to all these like high-end business personals, and watching you do that was motivation to Thank me you, as well. Because seeing a 22-year-old guy stand up on stage and deliver it to such high spectrum of individuals mm. is yeah, it's truly inspirational in itself. So and don't get sick. me wrong, thank you, man. That means a lot because I used mm. to have imposter syndrome. Mm. Um, people aren't familiar with imposter syndrome. Are you familiar? No, no. no. So imposter syndrome is the idea that you know. If you're not watching, I've got a little circle in my hand. Yeah. You know this much, and everyone else knows this much. That's and I'm now doing a bigger circle. Yeah. So you think everyone knows more than you mm. when it comes to podcasts, when it comes to martial arts. Mm. But what you need to realize is you only need to know a little bit more than your target audience, mm-hmm. and you can get away with it. Yeah. And that's what it is for a little while, is you feel like an imposter. Mm. When I was standing up in front of teachers, I don't have a degree in teaching. Yeah. I don't know anywhere near about the eye as mm. um, someone's got a PhD in neurological science. Yeah. So you're um, in a vulnerable position, aren't you? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. You know, whenever mm. we are in a vulnerable mm. position, this is our art form. Yeah. I say this all the time. Um, my girlfriend, she's trying to start a, um, she's having a little thing at the moment, what business she wants to start. Mm. And I warned her, you're going to be criticized. Mm. 100%. Yeah. And you have to think we are artists. We put our art out there and yeah. we have to expect that it's going to be critiqued. Yeah. And that's part of what we do. And so when I was starting out, all my friends were like, yeah, Jordan, you should do this. Mm. I was like, I can't. Because I, how I started was I just improved myself. Mm. I, I taught myself how to speak. That gave you the initial story as well, though, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Because you've got that backstory as to how yeah. you got into it. Yeah. And um, I had no intentions to start my own business, to teach other people how to do what I'd learned. Um, I'm like, Jordan, you should do this. I was like, I can't. Mm. I'm like, why? I'm like, well, number one, I'm young. Mm. Number two, I don't have a great beard like Francis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start selling beard oils. <laughs> oh, <after> Thank you. <laughs> um, number three, um, I don't look like any of the professors, the teachers, mm. not just in my skin tone, mm-hmm. but how I talk, yeah. um, how I deliver it. Mm. Um, I don't have the years of experience. I don't have 20 years mm. and... Um, CBS and BBC clients mm. all behind me like, but Jordan that's why we want you to do it mm. and remember these were students at the time because like, we can connect with you Yeah. and okay I started teaching students and that was great fun nine pound a workshop was it? Okay. it was awesome per person, yeah. per person yeah, of course it, yeah. yeah I'm not a dummy but it was a lot of work mm. I was standing outside the library with printouts giving them to girls to put into the toilets mm. I was hustling yeah. to sell nine pound spots yeah. um, and our first workshop we had 50 people oh wow maths isn't my strong suit but that was a lot of money That's you know as good, a first yeah. year student mm. Um, it was two years of me talking two years two hours of me talking rubbish yeah. <laughs> but people loved it how do you feel about that though initially when you were stepping out like on your first ever session there's no roadmap. yeah that's what I realised and people always ask me you know what's it like running your own business you mm. seem so happy and I bring it back every single day I have full autonomy mm. it's a Sunday right now mm-hmm. about half four mm. we don't have to be doing this me and you yeah definitely yeah. and for some people working a nine to five is awesome. Mm. You've got stability. Mm. You can leave your work at work. Yeah. And you're not always accountable. Mm. If shit hits the fan, excuse yeah. my French no, no, or my Spanish. As much French as you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if shit hits the fan, you can go home and you can rest your head yeah. to a degree, yeah. depending on your role. Um, and you can get another job. Mm. Let's be honest. Yeah. However, when you run your own business, 
there's two things that I love, and that's accountability 100%, that's and autonomy. Yeah. Autonomy meaning um, freedom. Mm -hmm. And accountability, some people, and even at times I hate, mm -hmm. as you know, bro, mm -hmm. the penny finishes and drops with us. It starts yeah. with us, it drops with us. Yeah. Nothing's going to move unless we do. Yeah. If it's going to work, it's up to you. If it's not, then it's up to you. Yeah. Yeah, how much you want to pay into it. 100%. You need to work. Yeah. 100%. You know, there's no, like I said, there's no roadmap of mm. you must deliver for two hours. You must stand at the front. Yeah. You must sit facing the camera. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. no roadmap to yeah. this. Um, if we want to go freestyle, mm -hmm. we can. Yeah. And then the other things, that, um, like I said, the autonomy, the accountability, mm. those two together. Mm. That's what attracted me. Oh, I see. Um, see. And but then the accountability can be scary, though, because you're, you're, oh, you're saying something that attracted you, but to other people, it's something that they don't <laughs> want to deal with. They don't want that level of smoke. Like, no. It's like, no. There's nothing wrong I, with that. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm, if, if all fails, I'm going to be exposed. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm vulnerable to not just myself, but to the rest of the world. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? Am I really capable to deal with this level of accountability? So, but to other people, it's a form of motivation. To me, it's a form of yeah, motivation, because I like being... I like having autonomy. I like being like the captain of my own shit. Mm. Sense, so, you got to yeah. do the accent when you do that, man. What's that? Oh, yeah. I'm the captain <laughs> I'm, of the I'm shit. I'm the captain of the shit. There you go. There <laughs> you the go. Eyes, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. No, definitely. That's, that's the thing. So it's not everyone that's able to do with it. But how were you yeah. able to do with it? Like, what was it that was innate in you that you think allowed you to be that individual? It's an interesting point. So if I get the question right, mm. what enabled me to feel comfortable? Yeah. Uh, running my own business? Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Don't think I am. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. Yeah, no, I think... Early days, isn't it? Yeah, I think what made me feel comfortable mm -hmm. um, was a very simple quote. Was it, mm -hmm. that you can always make more money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I type back to speed reading, you can't make more time. Yeah. That's a little tagline. But what I realized was you can always make more money, mm -hmm. but it's not about how much money you make. Mm -hmm. It's how you make your money. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, every day... I have a choice mm. and we talk about you know accountability mm -hmm. autonomy many people who work a nine to five don't have a choice of if they want to stay in bed mm. I have a choice I can work from my phone yeah. and I can answer my LinkedIn messages and maybe try and get some synergy and networking mm. through my inbox other people have to go to a physical location travel two hours a day yeah. to work up leave their the family dream, yeah. yeah say no to other events mm. um, and what I realised was part of my business mm. I want to do the least amount possible to get maximum results 80-20 yeah. right 80-20 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, what made me feel so comfortable was um, number one I have self-awareness mm. of who I am um, I don't you're constantly reviewing yourself. Oh, you massively, man. A lot recently, and it's helped me so much. Like, honest reviewing of who I am, where I am in life. And you have to. Really putting it down, yeah. And um, that's what keeps me going is, mm. am I happy doing this? Yeah. Am I happy doing what I do? Yeah. And if I don't, I stop. Mm. For example, after this, I've got a call with a young lady mm -hmm. who we're going to do a trip out in Spain. Oh, so Right. I've never done a, a retreat before. Yeah. I sat in my hotel room. I was bored. I was watching Pulp Fiction. Yeah. It's a long script <laughs> if you, you haven't seen it before. <laughs> yeah. um, and whilst I was in my hotel, I literally typed out an email. Mm -hmm. And I was like, cool. Five day retreat in Spain. Because mm. I've always, I love Spain. And I was yeah. like, okay, what would have to go into that? Just started like, brainstorming. Mm -hmm. Villas. Cultural activities. Didn't list the cultural activities. Yeah. <laughs> cultural activities. Yeah. Um, of course, workshops from mm -hmm. myself. Um, and I was like, okay, how much would that cost? And mm. so I added up how much it would cost. Mm. I was like, okay, how much is my service on top of that? Yeah. To do a one-to-one. -one. So okay, I could come out with about, about £900 profit mm. um, for you know, five days in Spain. Yeah. Sent the email out to a thousand people. Three people got back. Mm. I was like, incredible. One of them is looking like mm. it's going to happen. And that all came from me just sitting in my room. Of course... As soon as she shut those people that have shown interest, I had to then reach out to relevant parties. Mm. But if anyone's hoping to create their own business or currently working on their own side hustle, one of my biggest advice, if I can give any advice, mm. is don't build it until you've got people paying you for it. Mm. What do you mean by Go don't on. build it, though? Let's elaborate on Okay, that. so... Someone might assume that you're yeah. saying don't even start <laughs> until you've got people paying um, for it. Yeah. yeah. What I mean is start marketing it, start mm -hmm. selling it, Mm -hmm. but don't have the product ready yeah start selling the idea yeah, yeah. start selling the idea mm -hmm. um for example a lot of people 
it happens every day and some people might feel like they can relate to this and it might cause a little bit of pain mm. spend way too long working on their perfect website yeah right yeah. haven't talked to anyone about their business idea but it's all up here because I don't want anyone to steal it yeah you know I'm sorry to give you the sad truth. There's not many people that can steal your business idea. No, definitely. Two reasons. I, I've told a couple of my mates yeah. that as well recently. Yeah. 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 And the two reasons I found was one, it's your business idea. Mm-hmm. You've got the passion, they don't. Mm. Number two, believe it or not, people really aren't out there to look for business ideas. Yeah. People care about yeah. their own shit. And even if, yeah, and even if you're putting ideas in their head, not a lot of people are actually going to implement it and make something work on them. Oh, really tell happen. me. No, so definitely because I mean as I was discussing with you earlier on in relation to this podcast like the idea was out there but yeah. I wasn't going to do it until a friend pressured me and kind of put it on me to mm. make me do it and then yeah. when I started doing it and I really enjoyed it when the wood started when I started seeing fire and traction coming yeah. that's when it then motivated me to continuously keep pushing it so yeah it's definitely good because there's a lot of people out there like oh I'm not going to talk about my business ideas with anyone I'm not going to mention it because mm. I might steal and potentially make money out of it they have a um, they don't have an abundance mindset as well because they fear that if they someone else starts their business they're going to completely dominate the market and yeah. there's nothing left for them whilst the market is huge mm. you know what I mean the limit is all in here to not wrong yeah. um, and I really want to come on to that point that mm. abundance um, but the first one you know how do you go about selling something you don't have yet mm. number one let's take a product mm-hmm. and, and unfortunately we're distilling it to its very core mm-hmm. say you want to start a clothing line mm-hmm. you do not have to create the clothes yet to sell them what you can do is go to a thing called Kickstarter mm-hmm. or a crowdfunding platform mm-hmm. and what you do is you create this gorgeous page mm-hmm. they've got the templates um, you say to them if you contribute £15 to my campaign, mm-hmm. you'll be the first one to get the first 100 tops. Or we'll add your name to the T-shirt, right? If you donate £50, I'll sign one of the tops. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll do a meet and greet for £100, mm-hmm. right? So what you're going to start doing is you're going to get people pre-ordering mm-hmm. your product. You haven't produced a single T-shirt yet. You can worry about that later on, trust mm-hmm. me. People on these crowdfunding websites... My friend, he bought a wallet. It took three years till he got it. People uh, who come to these sites aren't like the people on Amazon. Yeah, they don't want it immediately. Exactly. Like, sort of the instant sort of service. Yeah. yeah. When you go to these crowdfunding sites, if you're honest, say, look, it's going to take us three years because mm. we need to perfect the process. But because you've been an early adopter and you've trusted the process, you'll get one of the first ones. I see. You'll get a sign, da 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 da. So that's one way, crowdfunding. The other way, is to create a cool landing page, mm-hmm. an email, social media, a little vote on Instagram. Mm-hmm. If I was to create a clothing line, how many of you would buy? Mm-hmm. I okay. see a lot of those posts. Yeah. You know, how much do you currently charge? And how much do you currently pay for your gym membership? Mm-hmm. You know, oh, I pay £45. What if I told you, you pay £5 more and you get access to mm-hmm. every gym in London, or 300 different gyms? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Right, now you're onto a business idea. Mm. Now you start reaching mm. out to different gyms. Yeah. Go a step further. Okay, you know, get early bird prices. Yeah. You know, and this is for a service company like my own, mm-hmm. where I physically have to come and deliver it. Yeah. Or product one. If you pre-order, we'll get early bird. Mm-hmm. You get it at a discounted rate. Is, is this a strategy that you've implemented yourself? I still do to this day. Amazing. And I try yeah. massively not to build anything until the market wants it because yeah. your friends and family will say oh man that sounds like a great idea yeah you got your but your friends and family ain't your customers no, <laughs> you know? not, no. I found out the hard way yeah. you motherfuckers know who you are I'm pointing <laughs> to my Instagram live by the way yeah, yeah you better go to studyfast.uk if you follow me on Instagram <laughs> uh, all jokes aside yeah. I realised that early on so I stopped trying to sell to my friends and family because yeah. they're not my customers mm-hmm. so you have to understand who you think your customers are aren't actually your customers and your customers when someone finds their credit card types in their 16 digit card yeah, those are your number real customers, yeah. their three digit security mm-hmm. code and takes money from their bank account that they've worked mm-hmm. for and get, yeah. puts it into your account yeah. they've never met you yeah. they don't have the product if we actually think about that concept it blows yeah, my mind it really does it really does yeah um, that is so yeah that's, that's my advice for mm-hmm. how can anyone get started and get paid without producing it yeah but uh, so with your business how yeah. at, what, at what stage did you know it's viable and what stage did mm. it become a complete business something that you were doing full time so did you have a job at this time whilst you was doing um, the seminars or did you straight away go into business? oh I'll be honest mm. I don't think I ever will be full time on study fast mm. as in that's my solo yeah. um, income yeah. um, I think we're both like yeah, minded yeah. 
having a single source of income, mm. once again, I, you know, my views are my views only. Mm. <laughs> I don't want this to put down anyone. If you have one source of income, you're vulnerable. Yeah, definitely trouble in the current yeah. state. Yeah. Current market is very... Mm. Uh, mm. And we talk about, you know, the market... Even we talk about accountability, even as my own business. When we left the EU, when we leave the EU, <laughs> yeah. right? I lost all my EU funding. So I was, oh, wow. my business, my only source of income was predicated on EU giving me money to mm. send English teachers, really weird concept, mm. to another country and delivering it there. I was like, why can't I just deliver it in the UK? But yeah. the whole politics of it. Yeah. As soon as Brexit got announced, that funding got cut. Mm. I had no income. Well, that was probably based on fear when nothing had really happened. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So what I'm saying is not, this doesn't appeal to people who've got jobs. Mm. This appeals to entrepreneurs who've only got one source of income. Mm. You are vulnerable to your customers. Not only that, but if your only source of income is from your business, mm. what happens when your employees want to leave? Yeah. What happens when one of your employees dies? Mm. I know it's extreme. I know it's a bit extreme. But you can't have one source of income. So to answer mm. your question, I don't think I'll ever be solo full-time or study first yeah. i have money coming in from speaking gigs mm. i have money coming in from consultancy i do that as well i help other training companies mm. sell and package their training i still don't know all the answers but yeah i'm a, just like your friend who helped you start the podcast yeah he helped you shortcut that process 100%. um and of course i get money in from the online courses i get money from corporate training money from educational training money from the retreat that I'm hoping to run now but, or, or everything, yeah. that you, everything that you set up yeah. what, what helped you with that process like, oh, okay. did, you, did you have a mentor or oh, nice. inspirations yeah. and how did that come back because I think some of the most interesting parts when it comes to speaking to entrepreneurs in general mm. is like finding out their journey and the steps that they've taken to establish themselves or get to the stages that they're in yeah. so you're, you're super young so you're, you're, you're 22 hey, I appreciate so, that but there's younger people no there's definitely younger you know people what I mean? and, and in the current market where you can create a business with your phone and with Instagram your phone. there's kids out there with like two million followers making hundreds of grand a week or a mm. month or posting stuff. So, what what was it for you? What was like your inspiration? And um, if it was wow. a mentor that you had, how did they kind of guide you? You know, number one, I'm a mama's boy. Mm. Uh, my mum was a little hustler herself. Mm. She used to travel to America when mobile phones weren't a thing in the UK. Yeah. Bring them to the UK, oh, sell them. Yeah. So, mum, she gave me permission. And you know, coming from a half African household, my mm -hmm. dad's Nigerian, my mum's Dutch, English, mm. and. Um, I constantly give school talks mm. and young black kids I'm you know Muslim kids as well because I under, don't know much about the culture but I understand it's just as strict mm -hmm. at times I think Asian families in general yeah. you know um, so can be the strict cultures, are quite similar, cultures yeah, yeah it's mm. very similar Asian mm. and African cultures mm. um, when you say you want to start your own business mm -hmm. and if fear kicks in if fear kicks in so how are you going to pay so, your bills if it, so. doesn't, yeah, if it doesn't work out mm. and my advice to the young, I will just use this term, black kids, mm -hmm. um, black just kind of encompassing ethnic minorities. Yeah. I did my dissertation on, you know, <laughs> what does the word black mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to get to that now. <laughs> um, so when I'm talking to ethnic minorities, black mm -hmm. kids, my advice is very transparent. It's like, look, I'm going to tell you right now mm -hmm. to start on your side hustle. Yeah. Difference is, and I'm going to tell you also, you mm -hmm. don't need to go to uni. I went to uni, I graduated. Mm -hmm. In hindsight, meh. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. It's not so easy to tell mm. your Nigerian dad, hey, dad, I'm going to start my business. I don't need to go to university to do that. Mm. That won't fly. Yeah. So who am I to tell them that advice? Mm. So, you know, you ask me, well, let me do that. My mum mm. gave me permission to take that leap. Mm. Still does. If I'm short on cash, mm. which occasionally still happens because mm. I'm constantly investing. Yeah, 100%. She'll yeah. back me and I'll mm. pay her back. Mm. She gives me permission. So you talk about why do no. I feel so comfortable? So yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I'm saying like getting that support from your family is amazing because it, it enables you to, it enables the creativity to blossom. Ah, yeah. I mean, I come from a household where like they, I mean, my parents, they want you to study. They want mm. you to do your homework when you're in secondary school. They want you to hand in your work on time. They want to ensure that you're getting some academic level of um, yeah, education or whatever. But at the same time, you're given the freedom to be creative and to mm. explore and to sort of like fly the nest and, and learn externally. And that enables me to be creative. Because yeah. if, if there was restrictions within the home, then it would be restrictions in my ability as a human to grow, mm. which is dangerous for, for children, I believe. I think Understand. that you're supposed to, uh, 
you're supposed to give them the, the basics, but then allow them to sort of like formulate their own and explore and learn. Do you know what I mean? Get burnt and know where, where you stand and where not to go, for instance. So, of course. Yeah, so it's amazing that you've had that. I've had something similar as well in my okay. household. I was, I was enabled to flourish. Yeah. Go about my business, yeah. And um, I think that speaks testament to mm. how powerful having um, family, friends, mm. um, girlfriend, boyfriends around you who support that. Yeah, 100%. Because other than they, you've got to make your own bed, literally. You've got to come home. Mm. And if your family don't support that, yeah. if your loved ones don't support that, it makes it difficult. Yeah. So that was number one. Number two, I'm a huge advocate that books are mentors. Yeah. You know, books literally have mm. the mistakes that I don't need to make. Yeah. Warren Buffett once said that learning from your own mistakes is good, mm-hmm. but there's no rule that you can't learn from other people's. Mm-hmm. And that really hit home with me. So from that moment, I started reading books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so first advice, well, not advice, my experience was my yeah. family. Number two was books, mm-hmm. learning from my books. And number three is mentors. Mm-hmm. You know, even yourself, I'm going to pick your brain about, you mm-hmm. know, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu after this. Yeah. Is I know you've been through stuff. Mm-hmm that I don't have to necessarily go through. Mm. So I'm going to ask you, and I, there's a great quote from um, Larry King, the great yeah, interviewer. Yeah. I think he's still going as well. He's still about, yeah. I've seen, a few, I've seen a few bits online. So yeah. He's still don't know who Larry he's King there. is. He's about yeah. 110. <laughs> <laughs> he's been 110 for about yeah. 10 years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man doesn't age. Yeah. Um, and he said, it's always better to have a good question than it is to have a good answer because oh, I never so. learned anything whilst I was talking. Yeah. I was like, oof. And I think it hits home. What you're yeah. doing right now, man. This this is my free education. Yeah. I'm basically getting consultation for free right now, but I'm to pay for it. For sure. But I mean, that that's what the podcast serves to me. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, I, I've I've mentioned it plenty of times. I've always struggled to learn the conventional way. But when I sit down with someone directly, mm. I'm listening to their story. I'm able to learn from their experiences and their lessons. It's it's. The, the value I'm getting is out of this world. So I, I feel like I'm getting a second degree now since I started this podcast. Stunning, and it's a degree that's more valuable than the first degree that I got. Because the first one, I haven't used it for nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas the second one, I'm learning valuable life lessons. I'm learning from other people's mistakes. And that's why the range of people I interview or not even interview, I have a, I have a conversation with, is yeah. it's vast. Like if you're old, young, business, politics, like educational stuff. So mm. it's expanding my mind. So it's, it's definitely fantastic. And it's serving like my second form of mentorship now I'm going into. So, yeah. And that's the key word. And I think you'll hear that as you listen to more podcasts. Mm. If you look into this field of entrepreneurship, mm. um, which I'm sure you have by the mm. sounds of things, yeah. and anyone listening, is you're going to constantly hear mentors. mentors Not yeah. saying you have to pay for them, because trust me, a lot of business coaches, I, I did quotation marks there, business product, coaches yeah. out there. Um, I definitely will never be one mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, it's the individual. Mm. I can tell you, bro, how to start a speed. I can tell everyone mm. how to start a speed in a memory. I just did. Yeah. I told you. Go, go online, type in speed. You, you have to learn from my course. Yeah. Learn how to speed with a memory train. Mm. Or how to improve your memory. Mm-hmm. And then go t- teach other people. Yeah. Okay, sounds so easy, Jordan. Yeah, mm. it does. But how many people are actually going to put in that work, though? Yeah. yeah. And we were talking about, you know, why am I killing it in my niche? Mm. And there's so many things that work in my favor that people work, listening won't. Mm. Number one is I love talking. Mm. Yeah, I'd like to think I'm a good orator. Yeah, you definitely are, yeah. And so you might know more about the eyes and the brains than I do. Mm. I don't care. I can communicate the idea better, not mm. just that, to different audiences. Yeah. You know, I understand when I go into a London school, mm. we'll just, you know, use that as a stereotype. Mm. I'll show my tattoos on my arms. Mm. I will swear, I will use humour. Mm. But then when I'm in a corporate setting, it's why we have long sleeves as our uniform, I yeah, cover my tattoos. Job, yeah. You know, and I do speak more articulate yeah and I, and I think something that most people tend to assume that's not a bad thing no it's, well. it's definitely not you've got, no. so you've got to your what, what you just mentioned there is actually great because something that um, I, I find with a lot of um, when I speak to a lot of young black boys for instance yeah. they, they, they always under the assumption that um, the colour always works against them but I'm like no you can twist it up you can switch for it you. it can work for you Brother. do you know what I mean it works for you greatly oh. so you just mentioned going into a London school now and show you a test they're going to be like oh cool this, this brother here looks like us he's mm. cool he's whatever but then you can then switch up and go into the corporate setting and because you have a skill set yeah. which is valuable to them yeah. you can work both sides of the field whilst if a for instance if, let's say you used to get a white dude yeah. who would fit perfectly in the white corporate setting if he goes into an inner city London school with a super posh voice yeah. 
no one's going to take heed to anything nope. you say. Because I went to I went to a secondary school in East London. It was yeah. like a hardcore boys' school. And if it was to have someone come in in a suit and tie and not looking like us to try and tell us what to do, we'd be like, yo, no one's listening to this. Yeah. Like, I'm not on it. But for instance, if I was younger and like, let's say a you came and spoke to us, we'd be like, okay, let's, let's listen to what my man has to say. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's that mindset. I appreciate that, that as well, man. I no, appreciate definitely. that. definitely. And it's that mindset that we need to have more of, that sometimes what you think it goes against you, you can use it for your own game. Do you know You're what telling mean? me. You learn the game and you have a skill set and something to deliver to people. So. Yeah. Mm. You know, before this, can I say the B word? Can I announce that yet? No, no, yeah, like, no, I can't, no, man, no. I can't announce it yet. Well, I'm announcing <laughs> oh, my news. I'm announcing my news, okay? Yeah, good, no, and this has no connection mm. either to Francis. Mm -hmm. But the BBC approached me, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more after this. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. Um, this all came from a free talk. Mm -hmm. And long story short, I'll be uh, testing mm. to see if I'll be presenting my own documentary on memory. Oh, see. But before see. that, I'll be doing like five tips on memory, how to improve it. Mm. A short online piece mm. that will determine if I do have my own series. Mm. Um, I look up to those that present mm. their own series. Yeah. And um, I was speaking to another presenter at the BBC mm. whilst I was at the audition. And he said to me, because uh, he does flog it. Okay. Um, it's called Paul Martin. Yeah. Audience probably don't know who he is. You don't need to know who he is. <laughs> I'm sorry, Paul, if you're watching. But he does flog it. Your mum yeah. probably watches it. Your yeah. auntie probably watches One of it. Them type of shows. Yeah. 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 And he said to me, Jordan, once you get your mm. piece, pitch it mm. as much as you can. He said, because they're going to love you, TV, because mm. you're good looking, mm -hmm. you're of colour, mm. you're young, but you're not too young. Mm. But you're, you also don't, can't tell your age by looking at you. Yeah. He said, you speak incredibly. Yeah. They're going to love you. So they're looking for young black men. They're looking for more Reggie oh, yeah, Yates, definitely. right? I can vouch to that because from my own story as well, yeah. which I can't announce this yet, but yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So at times, I know it sounds bad, mm. but it works in my favor. Mm. If I was a white, well-spoken man mm. with no um, troubled backstory, mm -hmm. would I be as successful as I am now mm. probably not I'd probably have to go into a different field and navigate it differently yeah. but you know my TED talk and I, I want to do a video on this why yeah. has it reached one million views yeah. you know I'd be dumb to say it wasn't because I'm oh, that sounds bad that sounds like I'm a narcissist but I'm yeah. good looking yeah. you know like, let's be honest we trust yeah. and we watch good looking people Love Island yeah. Reggie Yates is good looking yeah. you know he's presenting these Sometimes dull, potentially dull. Yeah. <laughs> areas. Exciting yeah. to us because he's mm -hmm. going to some exciting places. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when we really distill it, mm. you know, there's a lot of genetic things and 100%. your skin colour can really work for you. 100%. When yeah. you think it might work against yeah. you. That, that's, that's a real source of motivation right there to yeah. a lot of young black kids in particular who think that they, they can't get somewhere based on their skin colour. I say we've got an advantage. You know what yeah. I feel bad for? Yeah. I feel like being... <laughs> I feel like being a, a white man is as tough as it is than ever. Christian man is probably <laughs> tougher than anything now. In the worst state, in, in the current, I mean? in the current state of yeah. political yeah, ideology. So I definitely get that. Yeah, so you know, and ball is in your court. But mm. what, 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 what would your advice be to these young kids? Like, let's say you have to give okay. them two or three pieces of advice. So a, we're talking to like a young individual yeah. wanting to get into the business world. How would you? advise them <laughs> okay i'm gonna give my little brain some time to think about the second answer yeah no, definitely. but the first answer which i know and i usually give it mm. nine times out of ten but i want to do something different mm. for you bro is find someone who's got the results you have mm -hmm. and ask how the hell they did it 100%. like i know once again it sounds so obvious but if you don't ask you don't get mm. and common sense isn't common practice mm. if you want to start your own podcast mm. and someone wants to dm you I don't want to vouch on your behalf. Mm. I'm pretty damn sure you'd get back to them eventually. Oh, 100%. I would and you would tell you. them, probably, I was, I'm, I'm a huge believer in five minute favors. Yeah. <laughs> in a sense, I will do many things for people, mm. but not if it's more than really five minutes. Mm. So if someone asks, how do I start a podcast? Mm. I'm sure you'd give them like the crash course on how to do it. Yeah, definitely. Cool, get this equipment. Don't do that. Ba -ba -da, ba -ba -da. I'm doing it now. There's someone who I'm um, yeah, currently sort of like giving that information. Yeah. So he just asked me and I was like, yeah, cool. I'll yeah. send you the name of all the links um, for the equipment. I'll cool. let you know how to set up, how I went by the process. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely willing to share that. And it's, it's actually interesting you said the five minute thing as well because um, I recently had a podcast with a, a great guy called um, Alfie B. And Alfie, he's a super interesting um, cool. investor and his story is incredible. And um, he always says he offers anyone in 
anything. Five minutes. If you give him a shout, he will yeah. definitely get back to there you. There you go. Because not only are you giving, but you're potentially setting yourself up to receive down the line. And you're not yeah. doing it to receive, but it, it kind of works both ways. Because you don't know who you're in contact with. You don't know who you're giving a leg up to. And it could potentially work both ways down the line. So, yeah. Yeah, it definitely does work mm. to your benefit as well. To give to people, teach others, and also offer your value to them. Yeah. 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 So that would, that would be your first one. Yeah, and no, it's really annoying because you, you just reminded me of something that I believe in, yeah. which which is doing the right thing is always the right thing. Yeah, I think it goes hand in hand with what I'm about to say. But yeah, the first one is definitely find someone. Fly as close to the sun as possible. Mm. If you know the story about Icarus, the Greek mythology, the guy who flew close to the sun with his feathered oh, wings. Oh, yeah, nearly burned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck that guy. Be yeah. Icarus. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Fly as close to the sun, the sun being the guy you want to, or the woman you really yeah. want to aspire to be. Yeah. I can't stress how many times I've messaged Reggie Yates. Mm. He's already invited me to book launch with Matt. I message him pretty much every other week to get on his podcast. Yeah. I feel like he'll cave eventually. Yeah, eventually, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, but you know, I'm not asking him how he became a presenter. I'm asking Mm. him to come on his show. Mm. But yeah, go as close to the sun as possible Mm. and ask. We live in an era now where you can connect with anyone. Yeah. Um, My second bit of advice would be... um, but one more thing yeah, just to on. touch on that is yeah, on. when you when you do connect with people like don't so rejection is going to happen it's, ine- it's inevitable and sometimes there might be delays in responses yeah. so it's not something that you take to heart as you've failed because you're not able to reach that person because yeah. if it was up to me like everyone that I contacted to come onto my podcast mm. whenever they've turned me down like I, I didn't let it burden me I didn't let it put me down or I didn't let it stop my stride yeah. so you've got to remember that sometimes these individuals they might be busy they might got stuff going on but that doesn't mean you should stop A and two you shouldn't let it get to you to the point where you, it stops your dream yeah. it stops your journey to try and achieve whatever it is you're trying to achieve so definitely easier said than done yeah. Yeah, and I yeah, and, I've, and yeah. I, what, like what I no I'm criticising myself there because mm. I just said to everyone hey just reach out to Reggie Yates mm. but you've just hit them with the hard truth mm-hmm. which is Reggie Yates ain't going to get back to you yeah. believe it or not he's probably got I mean he, I know he's got yeah. girls in his DMs yeah. but I'm not I'm not important to Reggie <laughs> And I get, I look like you, yeah. and you don't want me stealing your thunder. Yeah. I'm like, come on, Reggie. Yeah, get free, get free. Yeah. But what I think, some practical advice, yeah. if that's going to be given, is offer to work for free. Yeah. Offer to help them. Mm-hmm. You might not know how. Literally, you can use this line, and I won't mm-hmm. be mad at you. Say, hey, Jordan, love what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Would love to help you. Yeah. Leave it so open and we talk about how can you sell a product without getting money? Mm. How can you help someone without knowing how you're going to help them? Yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Let me get back to you and be like, oh yeah, um, actually I'm looking for someone to help me with mm, mm. getting more speaking gigs. Perfect. Now you can tailor your response with some relevance yeah. to helping me, yeah. right? Instead of approaching me like, hey Jordan, I do this. I've looked at your Instagram. You've got shit engagement which I get and you can yeah. you can help I can help you get better engagement I'm not interested mm. <laughs> so I, I hope between our advice we've yeah. married that up quite well definitely yeah. reach out to people with results you have mm-hmm. understand there'll be rejection yeah. how can you reduce that offer help offer to work for free because yeah. not many people say and, that and then have something to give as well because yeah. there, there's people that are sitting in their house they've I mean the, the brutal honest truth about it is that they've They've got nothing to offer, but they just want to get in touch with someone. Mm. So, for instance, you want to get in touch with Reggie Ace, you've got something to offer. You've got a skill set. You've got a business that's already up and running. Yeah. And you've got maybe other fields and avenues that you want to get into. So, you're not coming to the table empty-handed. You're not, you're not turning up to the drink cup with no bottle in your hand. Reggie, you, know I mean? you heard this loud. <laughs> yeah, heard it loud and clear. You're not turning up to the drink cup with no, no bottle in your hand. There's, there's people at home. They want to do something. They don't know what they want to do, but they're seeing people on TV and they're trying to get in touch with them without offering. Mm. So, sometimes honing in and develop yourself or a skill set that you have yes, and then have something to offer and if mm-hmm. you do have something to offer then yeah go for it yeah you know i mean so that's of vital importance as well i believe and it comes to my second point mm. um it's almost like we scripted this it's mad <laughs> yeah. and this is funny enough because we've never no. met before this is no. our first time meeting so. yeah and i'm not gonna lie this is the best podcast i've done so far oh sick for real <laughs> I mean, you can pay me later on <laughs> um oh shit are we still recording yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the final bit of advice to lead on from what you're saying is understand you know we come back to self-awareness mm. to that degree that when you're starting out mm. it is okay to work a full-time job yeah 100 percent, and to work on your side hustle mm-hmm. and i know this advice may only apply to 50 percent of the audience mm-hmm. who want to start their own business 
maybe less in sports. Mm. Um, but the idea is, let's say you work a nine to five. You wake up at eight, you get home at six, mm-hmm. which I don't think I'm too far off from most yeah. people's schedule. Okay? We're in London again with all the delays and trying to get home at six thirty seven. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go six thirty then. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm really interested when people say, I don't have time to start my own business, I don't have time, blah, blah, blah. Because believe it, I'm sure you're hella busy. I'm hella busy. We still find time. Mm-hmm. From 6.30 to midnight, mm-hmm. I'm really interested in what people are doing what between those. Oh, but that's okay. If you want to watch Love Island, that's mm-hmm. fine. My mum watches every day. I wish I could keep up. That's fine. But don't complain about your situation. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, I wish I had a girlfriend. Oh, man, I wish I was better at martial arts. Oh, mm-hmm. man, I wish I had a business. Mm-hmm. Watch Love Island. Mm-hmm. Don't complain. Yeah. Uh, to come on to the point yeah between 6.30 and midnight mm. okay 6, 6.30 to half 12 at night mm. you've got 6 mm. hours yeah. that's like another working day 100% like if you want something you'll find a way mm. we've all done that if, you know you're never too busy you always find time for yeah. the important people yeah. so my advice is please, please 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 don't drop out of uni don't do what all these other entrepreneurs do mm-hmm. the success stories <laughs> Where there's only like six of them. That's well, like they only became billionaires from out of the here. millions that drop out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm trying to change the narrative that mm. I'm someone who went to uni. Mm-hmm. I took the two years as a test bed because we get student loan. We're rich for no reason, yeah, right? And we never pay it. that yeah. back because I'm never paying myself a salary over 21 grand. I don't care if the government's listening. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm never paying my student loan back because yeah. it gets wiped off for like 24 years. Yeah. Beyond how to beat the system, <laughs> that's another podcast. Is Whilst I was at uni, it gave me the test bed. Mm. And so when I came out, it was steady. So what I'm saying is, work your full-time job, mm. then work on your side hustle in the evening, mm. and then quit your full-time job when your side hustle is making the same or enough money for you to live the lifestyle you live. Yeah, 100%. And of course, within that, you have to be self-aware. You have to think, okay, what are my needs? What are my wants? Mm-hmm. Um, what are my vices? Um, I recently listened to a podcast uh, by Lewis Howe, and he's talking about money vices. Yeah. And it's okay if you like spending money on sneakers, mm. but don't then spend money on t-shirts, on jeans. And that. Like, understand what your vice is. Mm-hmm. Don't apologize, but understand. You probably need a bit of that as well to keep you motivated. And yeah, going. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I've got my own vices. Mm. What's your vices? <sighs> Legal ones? <laughs> I'm I'm That's a joke. You can talk about your it's a, it's illegal a big ones. J, that's a big JK there. <laughs> Suppose you're oh, so loud, yeah. I love that. So, my legal, no, my, my, my vice is full your stop. Legal okay? vices, yeah, let's get this clear. Yeah. We talk about the illegal ones after. <laughs> my vices, period, yeah. um, martial arts. Yeah. I don't care if I've got to pay a £55 membership yeah, that's it, yeah. to join a business jiu-jitsu. That's like half the price I'm paying. <laughs> oh my, yeah. there you go. I'm going to mention my club, but yeah, some of them are like 90 yeah, yeah, 100%. Stuff. Yeah. But then I, believe it or not, you mm. look at my shoe collection, mm. probably got four different types of shoes. Yeah. I'm talking to an entrepreneur here who yeah. has to go to different venues. Mm. I have two watches. I probably lost one, ironically. Mm. But yet I spend mm. hundreds in my health, yeah. in my wealth, um, I spend more money in getting my time back. Mm. E.g., I'd rather pay for a train or bus mm. than to drive. Yeah. Because I can that's, work. That's definitely, yeah. Whilst when I'm driving, I can't work. Mm. And at the end of the day, that's, that's one thing we can't get back. So I've now made enough money where I can get my time back. That's super interesting you said that because, I mean, w- when I used to work in, in the city a lot, when I was like taking train, I used to find myself reading so much more than mm-hmm. I do now. And when I'm driving, I don't find I don't have the well. You can't read. Well, you, <laughs> you got, can't really read and drive yeah. at the same time. So let's do it, human podcast. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So it actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that having those. I mean, using public transport instead of driving. Yeah, it, you're buying back some of your time in a sense to work. Yeah, yeah. I do love saving money. So if I can, yeah, um, I live in London. You don't necessarily really have to drive. But the only reason I drive is because I live in Essex. So coming into London yeah. for various things and having to carry my equipment around and so forth. I can imagine. I, I, I mean, I'm a drive now. Yeah. But um, one thing I'll add to, uh, is that in terms of the advice, is there anything else that you wanted to add to that? I mean, we could talk, for, but yeah, I think those two yeah. main points, just so people yeah. remember, so they yeah. can actively review, yeah. is number one, fly close to the sun, find someone with the results you want. 100%. Um, and ask them. Mm. And think for our way how to get leverage. Mm-hmm. And number two is, how would we summarize that? Is um, work 
on your side hustle. Yeah. Now. Mm-hmm. Like now, it's a Sunday. Get no, going. No bit of time than now to start. Yeah, like you're, you're never going to be ready. Mm-hmm. I, I do a lot of school talks about that. Um, I was never ready um, to get into a relationship. Mm. Um, I was never ready to start martial arts. Mm. Um, you're never going to be ready in a fight. A yeah, street fight definitely not, and I yeah. think you've probably had this advice you're either going to be underprepared yeah. or overprepared yeah. <laughs> I know which one I want to be yeah. <laughs> I know which one. I want to have the choice that yeah. I can kill a human mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then he kill me and my family 100% I'd rather have the, the control yeah. to allow us both to walk home Yeah, and it's interesting that you know what I mean having, having that skill set and knowing that you're able to oh, yeah. kill a human well we're obviously we're not, we're not advocating for killing but knowing that you're no. able to defend yourself defend yourself and, and Use take brute life, force protect if life. needed. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's it's really empowering, and it actually sometimes prevents you from even getting into those predicaments. Because whenever I tell people I do martial arts, they're like, "Oh, you you're out here kicking ass," and I'm like, "No, I've never had a street fight." I don't, yeah, since. I don't think I've had a street fight since you know I've done mean? martial arts. Yeah, <laughs> you don't. That's the thing because you're so calm about it. Yeah, and you're so humble about the situation, and even the, your mannerism and your I've tone. I've stopped him. Yeah. Yeah, but I haven't joined in and you kick the guy on the ground. Or... Yeah, no, no, because it definitely puts you in a position where you're so comfortable and confident in yourself. Unless obviously they pull out a massive machete, you're done. Yeah, <laughs> but you're able to defuse situations yeah. instead of like, do you know what I mean, infusing them. But um, there's one more thing I'd like to add to yeah, the advice please. that you're giving, and that please is um, delayed gratification. Because I think this society stoic, that we live in stoic. now that is so important because we're seeing so much flashy things in front of us. Like, mm-hmm. If you go on social media right now, everyone's a millionaire. <laughs> cool, right. Yeah, so it's I'd, a scary sight for. I'd say vet who you're following. You know, if, yeah. you, if you look at my followers, mm. uh, John Harry, you don't have to follow me, but mm. living proof. Put for about 150 yeah, people, you and all your information is going to be down in the bio. Bless, anyway, so I appreciate it, man. They should follow you and check out your work. Another little thing: if you message me and say you came from this podcast, mm. I will give you free access to one of my courses. That's I haven't even done that to you, That's man. That's it. Appreciate. So I promise you that I, I will give that, that to you. I mean, I'm that. gonna hold you for that. Yeah. But I mean that yeah. because I'm not gonna be a millionaire mm. after selling online courses. Amazing. Um, but yeah, vet who you follow. I follow about hundred people, mm. and I'll get, I'll drop people mm. if their content starts not lining up with what I want to see. Yeah. Because you're so true. right. That's true. Because it, it actually controls you emotionally as well. But mm. the, the people you follow, who you listen to, yeah. they, they, they control you. You don't know it. Sometimes you think that you've got autonomy and you can, you, can, you can vet them internally. But if you're consuming all of this type of stuff, you're going to be controlled by those individuals, whether it be yeah. their political views or their ideas on life and stuff like that. So it's truly, it's truly important that you vet who you're following Thank on you. social media. Because everyone's on social media now 24 mm. 7 so yeah and delayed gratification as i mentioned before because on social media there's so much there's so many shiny things out there yeah. that you want quick access but only so you're able to acquire more shiny things mm. but sometimes if you're trying to build a business or establish a, pro- a product or a service or whatever you got to learn how to control yourself from overspending mm. until you reach the point where you can do whatever it is that you want to be yeah. able to do in terms of like monetary wise so yeah, that's another part I'd like to add in there. But um, before we we head off, we're definitely going to chat again. I'd love to, I've already enjoyed it and I think we've got so much more to say. But yeah. I wanted to just sort of like lay the foundations and at least develop some sort of like rapport and relationship and, and get to understand each other. But is there anything that you've got coming up that you'd like the people to know about? Um, I'm currently building a public speaking course. See. Um, I generally believe, and there's studies out there, that public speaking is the second most feared thing. Yeah. To guess what the number one is. Um... I don't know, heights. Why does everyone... I mean, it's, it's logical, it's logical. With. Yeah, because that's what we're born with, isn't it? Height, what's noise. the one thing we don't want taken away from us? What, sight? Huh? I mean, that's, that's got to be up there too. So, public speaking... What's um, worse than losing our sight? At least you're still a... Alive. Alive, yeah. death. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's yes, cool. Yes. It's, I love doing I that. Think so. that far <laughs> <laughs> but I'd love to know the psychology behind that. Mm. You know, why do people jump to heights as their number one fear, but they don't think about death. That's true. But I don't, we're not going to get into that now. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. But yeah, so public speaking, I'm sure some people would rather die before giving a public talk. I mean, <laughs> I mean university, college times, I would have, I, I, I'd come up with any excuse yeah. not to speak in public. Any excuse. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I, uh, one, I didn't have the confidence to, because I just thought my, I just thought my accent sounded weird. Being mm. in London, I just didn't think I sounded proper enough. Do you know what I mean? Until I reached the point where 
I felt, nah, I'm cool being me. I'm free with myself. Your authentic you know I mean? self. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm happy with who I am. I got that innately built confidence now that's come out. So I'm like, what, whatever. It doesn't matter how I sound. As long as I'm able to get my point across some way, somehow, mm -hmm. I'll do it. But yeah, public speaking is one hell of a scary yeah. sport. Yeah. So, you know, we talk about um, creating something before it's sold. Mm. And, you know, and I, I'm a huge believer in practicing what you preach. Yeah. So right now... Um, my girlfriend, she's my speaking agent. Oh, so she deals with all the inquiries. Mm. And we're now doubling down on that because before I create a course and the course is going to be clearly titled on how to get a paid speaking gig. Oh, okay. So we're not just going to teach you how to improve your ability to conversate mm. and speak on stage, mm. but how can you actually um, monetize that? Mm. Because there's going to be people who are currently speaking, mm. maybe they're listening now, maybe yourself, mm. and they're not getting paid. Mm. Currently people that are speaking and getting paid, but want more gigs. Mm. And there's currently people who are petrified of speaking and just want to be able to deliver to their colleagues. Yeah. yeah. And the course is going to be three months. Mm. It's going to be live coaching with me each week. Oh, it's going to be intense. Um, and I can't give away too much because we're still in the process yeah. of figuring I mean, it all out. When the details come, I'm definitely going to push it on my social I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. and I love the process because I'm having to learn. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm having to find my craft. I'm loving the process at the moment. And um, there was a great quote by one of my, one of my boys who I, I recorded a podcast recently. He said, um, he, he was talking about how he wants to change the narrative about the process because everyone always wants to see the end product without like, appreciating the process. And he spoke mm -hmm. along the lines of, um, he wants, I, 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 I'm always posting it now. He, he, oh, I'm probably going to end up paraphrasing and I'm getting it wrong. But he said, I said, he, just he, don't he, butcher it. Yeah, he said, he said, <laughs> He said hard work, he, he said he wants hard work to be so attractive that it's, um, that it's fucking sexy. That, that, that's his quote, that's, that's the tagline that he's going with right yeah. now, um, it's being Alfie. So he's constantly pushing it now that the narrative should be the, hard, the, the process and the hard work that's put into establishing or achieving what it is that you're trying to I achieve. Know. Because most of the time we're not sharing the process. No. So he's really documenting his journey right now. Good. He's someone that's been all the way up there, went down and now he's come back Good. again. So the, the process should be enjoyed. You should see all your struggles as part of the process, part of the learning curve. Yeah. And I'm able to now reflect on some of the L's I've taken along the way in life. And hey, you either win or you learn. Yeah. You either win or you learn. That's it. Do you know what I mean? The L's for learning. So it's like, wow, well, okay, now I know not to step into that fire again because I'm going to get burned. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you, you better learn how to navigate. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's amazing. So definitely people should enjoy the process and um, push forward because, yeah, eventually we'll so, get there. Yeah. But Jordan, anything else that you want to share? Or Good. I say stop listening to podcasts and create your side hustle. <laughs> I'm joking. No, definitely. I'm You've joking. got work to do. Listen to it in your yeah. earpiece, but yeah, get your work hustle done. But Jordan, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on today. Thank Let's you. do this podcast. Yeah. And we're definitely going to catch up again. I want everyone to go and check sure. out all your socials, check out the great work that you're doing and also the free courses that you're giving out yeah. to all the listeners who came through via the podcast as well. But we'll definitely sure. catch up again, bro. But it's I been mean, a pleasure. Well, yeah. I thank love you. what you're doing as well. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. And if there's any way I can help, yeah. this is practicing what I preach, yeah. let me know. Definitely. We'll be Appreciate that. Boom. That was sick, bro. Absolute pleasure. I feel like we could have kept talking for hours. <laughs>